When did your gut feeling of something's not right here save you? There's been a few times where I hadn't listened to my gut, but one sticks out where I did. I used to live in a smaller Minnesotan town down near some train tracks and a bike-slash-running path that extends out of town into the woods. One evening, I'm sitting outside on my porch drinking a couple of beers with my buddy. Two dudes walk up on us kind of out of nowhere and immediately something seemed off with them. It's a college town and drunk people come up onto your porch a lot or randomly just say hello on their way to or from the bars downtown. But these dudes had a badass vibe to them. I had a little black Louisville slugger lying next to me on the porch, so I grabbed and just held it across my lap. One dude asks us, you guys got an extra smoke? But he says nope. The other guy comes up real close almost onto the porch and says, did you see my face? I just kept looking forward but not directly at him and just said, nah man we didn't see anything. He said something like, good, lil punk ass. And they both walked away. Two nights later I'm sitting in my living room with the same buddy and the local news is on. Two guys arrested for robbing and stabbing a man a couple nights back on the trail down by the train tracks next to where I live. My buddy had looked at their faces coming up and I had seen the dude clear as day that had asked for the smoke. It was those same fucking guys. I woke up at 3 a.m. once sitting upright in bed. I felt on alert and my heart raced when I saw that my cat was on alert too, wide awake by my feet with his ears perked up. But I didn't see or hear anything weird. Something didn't feel right and I couldn't relax. So I got up and went to the kitchen, turned on some lights and ate food even though I wasn't that hungry. Eventually went back to bed. We discovered the next morning that someone had stopped while in the process of using some kind of tool to silently cut a big hole in the glass window in the living room. They were trying to break in, right next to the bedroom. I think the lights I turned on scared them away. Edited to add that we had three long years of issues with our neighbors. They repeatedly came into our property and were pissed that we put up a nine-foot fence to keep them out. This attempted break-in happened right after the fence went up and two days before they all moved out. Glad those pieces of shit are long gone. At age five, I was almost abducted by strangers at the park who had a bunch of toys on a blanket and tried to lure me into their motor home. I looked back to my dad, who was talking to his friend maybe 100 yards away. I got a tummy ache when one of them tried to coax me by reaching for my arm to lead me away, and I screamed and ran like hell back to my dad. Years later, I found out those same people had abducted other kids who weren't so lucky. Never ignored a gut feeling since. Thanks for all the positive feedback. And FYI, trust me, once my dad got over the shock, he let me have it for not only wandering off, but speaking to complete strangers. I talked to my mom a bit about it today, and she told me my dad broke down and blamed himself. Positive outlook on this though, guys, this is just one instance, scary as it may be, where my gut led me in the right direction and my instinct for danger is now uncanny. I truly believe everything happens for a reason. I trusted my instincts and it kept me safe still does. Well, I was walking home. Wasn't late and I'm from a pretty safe area, but it was that time of year when it starts to get dark really early so felt kind of ominous. Anyway, I pass this guy in a red sweater and red tracksuit bottoms and he looks at me funny. Maybe he's high. Maybe he's drunk. Either way, something not quite right about him. I keep going. Look behind me. He's still there. Cross the road. He crosses with me. As soon as I turn a corner, I sprint to my apartment complex and run into the coated gate and wait. He rocks up a minute later and stares at me through the gate. He just stares at me for a good 10 or so seconds then runs back the way he came. I'm a firefighter. We got called out to a tree fire started by fallen power lines. We pull up in the truck and I'm trusting that my driver and crew leader are doing their job and have good situational awareness. We get out of the truck and we've parked next to a set of power lines, not fallen. It's a very windy night and I can see the lines swinging, so I voice my concerns to my crew leader who says it'll be fine. We get out hose out. Risk of the tree fire catching on to a house outweighing potential risk of arcing plus the line disconnected when it fell, and I'm on the branch ready to start putting it out with two others near me when I get a chill. I look up see the line swinging violently and yell, everyone fucking move. As the three of us sprint and dive out of the way, we hear a thwip and crack, and sure enough, the line we were under came loose and stayed connected to the power pole. If I hadn't got that chill, chances are we would have had three fried fireys. Had a friend who said we should go to this party he was invited to by a classmate of his. We ended driving out to it. We noticed the neighborhood was not too pleasant and sketchy. We saw that house had some lights on in backyard, but kind of quiet for a party. I decided that we should not go since something felt really off. Friend ended finding the classmate that invited him got robbed and threatened when he went to party. It ended up being a fake party. I've told this story before, 
but I'll tell it again. It's one of many, but this one stands out. I'm about seven, my neighbor's eight and nine, and we're at a bus stop. Guy in stereotypical white van pulls up and asks if we've seen a dog. He doesn't describe the dog, and the truth is, dogs ran around in our neighborhood. My mother taught me stranger danger since as long as I can remember. So one of the boys at the stop, we'll call him Paul, Paul describes a dog and man and van is like, that's my dog, why don't you get inside the van, we can all go look for him. Well, I had red flags going off at this point, and said, no, I have to ask my mother, and as soon as those words left my mouth, he peeled out. It was only later that I realized I saved us all from child abduction, specifically Paul who was walking toward the van to get in. Teach your kids what to do if this situation happens. Get the license plate, the guy's face, the car type, and what to do if something does happen. If I had known to snag his plates, we might have had a chance at catching him, but I only knew to say no. Another time, I was speeding down a hill and thought, what if there's a deer around the corner? So I slowed down and sure enough, there were three deer in the road. Saved my own life by a rando thought. Some dude get off the bus at the same stop as me. It's about 8 p.m. in October, so it's quite dark out already. He had spoken to me on the bus, one line about nice weather. Anyway, he gets off the bus after me. I cross the road and make a mental note of him walking the opposite way to me. I make sure to watch him walking away. Something in my gut says not to trust him. To get to my house, I have to walk up a hill with a path alongside a high stone wall. It is secluded. Usually I listen to music as I walk. I decide not to this time. I'm about halfway up when I get this awful feeling. I take out my phone, dial my mother's number, and as I do I hear fast steps of someone running up behind me. I know it's the guy before I turn around and as I do he is literally running full speed towards me. I look him dead in the eyes, ready to fight for my life. As I do this, my mother answers her phone and I say, Hi mom. He slows right down to a light jog and says evening as he jogs past me. I ask my mom to stay on the line. Her BF comes out to meet me at the top of the hill. The guy is nowhere to be seen. He was definitely running up behind me to strike me and by turning to face him I'm certain it threw him off. Went to a college party and one of the guys made me feel very uncomfortable. He didn't ever do anything to me but something seemed off. I kept dumping my shots because getting smashed seemed like a bad idea. I ended up taking a friend and leaving while he told us that we were being lame by not having more of the grey goose. He raped another girl at the party that night. I had a similar experience in college. I went to a frat party at another school and just got a really bad vibe. The guys had a separate bowl of punch for girls, which wasn't that unusual in itself, although maybe it should be, and I noticed some of the girls seemed off slash way too drunk, so I helped them get out of there, warned the other girls at the party, and called campus security on the frat. It turned out that a bunch of girls were roofied at the party and had to be hospitalized. It all got swept under the rug and there were no penalties for the fraternity as far as I know. Worked as a shot girl at a pub. One night, I rejected someone who attempted to get my number. Not unusual and he didn't seem that bothered. The whole exchange wasn't strange to me. In the early hours after the bar closed, I went to leave through the back door into the car park like usual when I saw the sensor light outside was on. Someone was stood just outside the door. I felt uneasy, so went out the front and asked one of the bouncers to walk me round the back to my car. As we rounded the corner, we spotted this guy lurking outside the door holding his belt like a makeshift garage. When he saw us, he started screaming that I was a fucking bitch and I should die. He scampered off into the road and never came back. Someone came into my work that gave me the I'm in danger feeling. I work in a place where 60% of my customers are children and I naturally get very protective of them. But you can't call the police because someone's creeping you out. He kept getting close to children, but not doing anything or even making them uncomfortable, so there still wasn't anything I could do. He leaves and I shrug it off. Another customer soon comes in and gives me the same feeling, so I'm thinking I'm just anxious today. He's talking about Donkey Kong and stuff, casual conversation. Then he says, I'm best friends with Martin Bryant, the spree killer from the 1996 Port Arthur Massacre, who is in solitary confinement and can't even interact with whoever has to throw his food at him so I'm getting a bit nervous now. Then the first creepy guy comes in, and the one I was talking to says, I know him, we went to prison together. So immediately, I start having a panic attack and have to end the conversation as quick as possible so I can contact the manager to say I need someone else to come into the store. I was there alone, and they immediately call the police. Turns out they were both registered sex offenders, neither were allowed anywhere near my work because it's too close to the CBD, 
and they're legally now allowed near anywhere that could have children there. I actually recently went to court for this, waited hours to go in, and he pleaded guilty at the very, very last second. Bastard. Edit. I offered way too many details and now I'm super uncomfortable with everyone guessing where I work. I've had terrible experiences with people finding out where I work and I'm a bit spooked. When I was in middle school and around 14 years old I was returning home. I live like 5 minutes away from said school and I noticed there was a man following me. He wasn't looking at me, he was looking at his phone and he wore a cap so I wasn't able to see his face fully. Anyways he gave off this weird vibe. I reached my apartment building and the guy was still behind me. I know mostly everyone who lives in my neighborhood and I couldn't recall him. Last moment I decided I wasn't going to go inside the hallway. I turned around and went to a store where I waited for my mom to come. A few weeks after there was some news about an 11-year-old girl from my school who was raped in the building right behind mine two days after the incident. The guy they caught looked a lot like the guy who had followed me and given the time frame and the proximity there's a high chance that it was him.